All right, so now we're going to turn our attention to medians and altitudes. Medians and altitudes are, again, segments that we're going to draw in triangles. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to construct them and some uses for them. Um, but again, we're going to keep adding to our vocabulary, and it's really important that um, you guys get into your vocabulary and you understand the terminology that we're using. Okay? All right, that being said... Um, median. The median of a triangle is a segment from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So you need to remember that a mid-segment was a segment that went, that joined the two, um, sorry, the mid-segment is a segment that joins two midpoints of sides, right? The median goes from a vertex to a midpoint of the opposite side, right? Um, so, in this particular triangle, triangle ABC, BF, CD, and AE are all medians, stretching from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. The, as you see here in the diagram, the medians are going to all meet at a common point. They are going to be concurrent. That point of concurrency where they meet is called the centroid um, the centroid is going to be inside the triangle. It will always be inside the triangle, a lot like the end center is. Okay. Now, the significance of the centroid, um, and here point O is the centroid, is that it's the center of gravity for the triangle. So if you were to, um, you know, I don't know, construct a triangle out of wood or metal or anything, the centroid... Uh, would give you, and it had to be a flat triangle, the centroid would give you that triangle center of gravity. You know, as long as the thickness of the triangle is uniform throughout, the centroid would give you that center of gravity for that triangle. So, in other words, you could balance that triangle on the tip of a pen um, if you were to physically create it. Um, one use for that could be in uh, construction, where if you have a triangular um, uh, shape that you're trying to support, uh, you'd want to find where that center of gravity is so you could put a support beam under it to support that that shape, that that uh, triangular shape, okay? Um, now, there's a couple ways to find the centroid, and we have all along the way uh, used the coordinate plane and then some of the formulas that we have that we can use in there uh, to help us find things, and so we can do that again for the centroid. Uh, if we have a triangle and we want to find out where the centroid is, we could put the triangle in the coordinate plane so that the vertices have coordinates. For example, triangle RST, we can put into the coordinate plane to where the coordinates um, for R uh, is 1, 4, for S is 3, 8, and for T is 5, 0. Uh, and the coordinates of the centroid, uh, we, can use, we can do that to help us find the coordinates of the centroid. Okay, now, um, how do we go about doing that? Well, the centroid, again, is created from all of the medians intersecting, and the medians go from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So, what we can do is we can find the midpoint of RS, right, and RS is here, um, and then sketch a, a segment from uh, angle T to that midpoint, right? Well, how do you find midpoint in the coordinate plane? Well, there's the midpoint formula, right? Remember, the midpoint formula is pretty much average the X's and average the Y's. So, for side RS, we would have, let's see, for R, it's up here. This is X, this is Y. This is going to be X um, and Y. And so 1 plus 3 divided by 2, 4 plus 8 divided by 2 gets you to a point at 2 comma 6. Okay? And so at, at 2, and it's, it can be kind of hard to tell, here's the origin. At 2 comma 6, that's where our midpoint is. So if we're going to construct the median, we're going to draw a segment from uh, T to uh, that, that midpoint. Okay? Now, we can turn around and do the same thing for another side say side ST, right? So now we're going to average the X's from S and T and average the Y's from S and T. 
to find the midpoint of that side ST. Okay, we do that, we get 3 plus 5 uh, divided by 2, 8 plus 0 divided by 2, and so at 4 comma 4, you're going to find the midpoint of side ST, which gets you about right there. And so we draw in the segment there. Now, as you can see, those two medians meet at this point, um, 3 comma 4. And so that apparently is going to be our centroid. Now, we can go ahead and draw in the centroid from vertex S. We could certainly find the midpoint from R to T. That wouldn't be that hard to do. Um, so this would be um, X, X, Y, Y. So we would simply go 1 plus 5 divided by 2, 4 plus 0 divided by 2, and get to a point of 3 comma 2. And 3 comma 2 would be right there. And if we were to draw in that segment, right, then we would see that they're intersecting at that point 3 comma 4. So the centroid is going to be at 3 comma 4. Okay. Um, now what might be pretty interesting is to pay attention to some distances from the vertices. Okay, for example, especially this guy right here, right, the length of that whole segment, it's a horizontal segment, so you just count the grid lines, right? It's one, two, one, two, three. So the length of this whole segment is three. But look at how, what the centroid does to that segment. It divides this segment so that the length on the left-hand side of the centroid is 2, and the length on the right-hand side of the centroid is 1. Now, this is very interesting, and it creates a theorem that we're going to use. So if you kind of see that, great. If not, here's the theorem. The concurrency of medians of a triangle theorem says that the medians of a triangle intersect at a point that is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of their opposite side. What does that mean? Well, in this particular picture, again, P is your centroid. So then the length of AP is two-thirds the length of the entire segment AE. Okay? This hasn't been labeled, so this is going to be E. This is F, and uh, this is D. So basically what we're saying is the lengths are broken up so that this is two-thirds and this is one-third. This is two-thirds and this is one-third. This is two-thirds and this is one-third. So from the centroid, the segment that goes from the centroid to a vertex, right, is the two-thirds part of the median, if that makes any sense, right? The two-thirds, the longer piece of your median, when the centroid breaks up the median, the longer piece is always from the centroid to the vertex. And that's two-thirds, one-thirds, is sort of that relationship, okay? So how do we use that, okay? Well, here we have triangle RST, where Q is the centroid, and the length of SQ is 8, find QW, and find the length SW. Well, what we know is that the length SQ has got to be 2 thirds the length of the entire segment SW. Okay, from the centroid to the vertex is always the 2 thirds side of the entire median. So SQ is two-thirds the length of the whole SW. Okay, well, SQ is 8. So we need to go through and solve this equation. Now, uh, since we want to get SW by itself, right, we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3 over 2, so the reciprocal of two-thirds. We do that so that this will multiply out to 1 and we get SW to be. 
Uh, 3 times 8 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. Right, so SW is 12, and if SW is 12 and SQ is 8, then QW is just going to be 12 minus 8, or 4. And of course, 4 is the third of 12, and so there's your breakup of 2 thirds, 1 third between your, your segment pieces there. Okay? And hopefully that makes enough sense. Okay? Now, um, another example here for you. Uh, there are three paths in this triangular park in some downtown area. Each path that they've poured goes from the midpoint of one edge to the opposite corner. And all the paths meet at P. Okay, if SC, which is right here, is 2,100 feet, what's the length of PS and PC? Okay, well, same thing here. We're going to use the, that median, that, that um, centroid theorem, I guess, to recognize that from the centroid to this vertex, I can use a different color here so we can see it, From the centroid to this vertex is two-thirds the length of the whole segment here. So that means PC is two-thirds the length of the whole segment SC. Now, since SC is 2,100 feet, we can just multiply this out. Two times 2,100 is 4,200. And divide that out, and you get... 1400. So PC is 1400. Well, if PC is 1400, then to find SP, we're simply going to take 2100 minus 1400, and that's going to get us 700. So the length of SP is 700 feet. These are feet. Okay? So there's that two-thirds, one-third relationship. All right? Now, uh, so that's kind of some things about the centroid. It's the center of gravity for the triangle, and it divides each median up into a two-thirds, one-third length relationship. Altitudes. The altitude of a triangle is a segment that is drawn from the vertex and is perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay? Now, as you see here, since the altitude only cares about being perpendicular to the opposite side, it doesn't necessarily have to stay inside the triangle. So, in the case of triangle QPR on the left-hand side here, the altitude is definitely inside. We go from the vertex and we draw a segment that's perpendicular to the opposite side. Now, the issue with that is if I wanted to draw, if I had a different triangle, QPR, if it looked differently here, and I wanted to draw the altitude from the vertex Q to the side PR, here's the thing. If I tried to keep this inside the triangle, this is definitely not perpendicular. Neither is this. Okay? This is definitely not perpendicular. Neither is this. Neither is this. And so we have to keep moving this segment to the left in order to get to what's going to be perpendicular to the opposite side. So basically what we have to do is we have to uh, extend side PR here out to create uh, a, you know, uh, a, a piece of PR so that we can draw a perpendicular segment from vertex Q to the opposite side. It certainly makes sense for us to be able to do that. We've extended sides and triangles before when we were creating exterior angles, and so we can do that. But for that reason, the altitude can very well travel outside of the, tri of the triangle. It's the first segment, as a matter of fact, in which um, the entire segment can be outside the triangle. All right? Now, because of that, uh, we're going to find some interesting things about 
uh, different types of triangles in just a second. If you were to draw in all the altitudes of a triangle, they also would all intersect at one point. They would be concurrent as well. Okay, The altitudes or the lines containing the altitudes would be concurrent as well. That point of concurrency is called the orthocenter. Okay. All right. So in this triangle ABC, P is your orthocenter there. Um, and so you, again, you know that you know that these segments, um, and this is not labeled either. Um, but for triangle ABC, P is the orthocenter here. So the segments um, A, whatever. We probably need to give those uh, these points some names. So D, E, F. So again. Um, you know, AD, you know, is an altitude because it goes from vertex A and is perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay, uh, and same thing for B, um, BF, and uh, EC. Okay, now, uh, different cases in the orthocenter. It's, it's interesting that the orthocenter and the circumcenter are both kind of the same where they can either be inside, outside, or on the triangle. The orthocenter is going to be inside an acute triangle. It's going to be on um, a right triangle, which makes enough sense. If I'm going to start from this vertex and be perpendicular to the opposite side in a right triangle, then it makes enough sense that it has to be drawn down this side right here because there's, there's your already made right angle. Um, in that uh, right triangle, okay? Um, and then, again, just to give you some foreshadowing, so a look ahead, we'll talk about what happens when we draw this altitude in a right triangle at a later date. Now, uh, in an obtuse triangle, the orthocenter is going to be outside the triangle, okay? Um, just the nature of uh, how we have to draw the orthocenters, all right? And that's kind of the, uh, the, uh, the most interesting part of an orthocenter there, is that it helps us type the triangle. Okay, so let's recap. Construction of three. So there are four sets of segments that we were constructing in a triangle. And depending on what sets, what type of segments those were, it created a point of concurrency that had its own name. Altitudes, if we constructed three altitudes, it would give us the orthocenter. If we, if we constructed three um, medians, they would meet at a centroid. If we constructed three angle bisectors, they would um, create an end center. And if we constructed three perpendicular bisectors, then they would meet at the circumcenter. And so you need to be able to keep those straight. And that, in keeping them straight, as far as which points were created by what um, segments intersecting would help us construct these as well. Okay. Speaking of which, it is time to do that construction. We'll go over that in class uh, next time. All right. And that's it. Uh, homework's out in Canvas.